Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games, and let's make some games. So I recently made a handful of videos on optimizing 3D games in Game Maker, and different things you can make them do to run faster. And I suppose it was just a matter of time until I decided to sit down and make a set of videos on regular optimization in Game Maker, and things that you maybe could do to make your game run faster, even if you're not one of the one of the weirdos who who likes to make 3D games in Game Maker, like me. Now, with that said, today I'm going to talk about something that people do like to bring up on occasion when it comes to making your games in Game Maker run faster, and that is the subject of loops. If you've ever heard someone make the claim in Game Maker that four loops are slow, raise your hand. Not that I have any way of telling if anybody's actually doing that or not. So the fact that four loops are slower than some other kinds of loops in Game Maker is, is based on real computer science. It is a fact. Uh, you can measure it. It's not just some, some rumor that started somewhere on the internet and has been self-perpetuating ever since. It is, however, one of the things that I generally consider a micro-optimization. And I'm actually going to make the argument that in a vast majority of real-world cases, it is not something that you should actually worry about. Certainly, there are some situations if you're doing something really weird, if you have some, like, really complicated AI, this may be something that's worth considering. But for everyday use of Game Maker, this is probably not something that's worth losing a ton of sleep over. So what do we mean when we say that for loops are slow? So in a nutshell, anything that you write in GML will be slow, and anything that you can leave to the internals of the engine will be fast. Uh, when you have a for loop, as I'm sure you all know, we have an initial condition, we have a, a comparison, which determines whether or not the loop will continue or terminate, and we have an update condition, which is whatever happens at the end of the loop. And all this code is running inside GML, and um, an extra detail that some people may consider important. It's also happening on the 64-bit floating point uh, numbers that Game Maker uses for its regular its regular number values, rather than something like an integer. Let me actually this is um so let me get into this actual project. So in the create event of the only object that's in the game, I am going to be randomly generating a couple random x y positions, and by a couple, I of course mean 50,000 random x y positions. And those are going to go into the array, into an array that just says ducks. And over here in the draw event, we're going to be looping over that array in a for loop, and we are going to be drawing the duck sprite um, each time at the x and the y position in each of the uh, each of the slots in the array. So I'm going to run the game now just so that you can see what that looks like. You probably have a pretty good mental picture of what this is going to look like. Uh, I'm going to run it in debug mode. Yeah, we have a lot of ducks on the screen. I don't know how many are actually visible, considering that most of them are probably going to be behind the uh, the ones that you can actually see. And I'm going to go into the debugger, and I'm going to go to where is it? Other, uh, the profiler, the profiler tool, and I'm going to start profiling for maybe about 10 seconds. The profiler is a handy tool which uh, is going to measure the amount of time it takes code to execute, and uh, we can um. We can use that to figure out what parts of our game's code are taking up a lot of time. Okay, so I let that run for a little bit of time, and uh, the end result is that the draw event itself takes up 48.9 milliseconds, so about 49 milliseconds. Uh, and um, the array length function, so so this, uh, the array length function was called 50,001 times, and it took up 2 and 2 thirds milliseconds. And the draw sprite function was called 50,000 times, and it takes up 11.49 milliseconds. About 11 and a half. Um, if you're paying attention, you will note that 2.667 plus 11.492 does not add up to 48.949. And that is because there is other stuff that's happening inside the draw event, inside this code here, that is not accounted for in the, uh, in the profiler. Uh, the profiler only looks at individual functions, but there are other things that's happening in these three lines of code here that is not an array length or a draw sprite. Uh, for one, you have the for loop itself. You have the I++ that's happening at the end. Uh, for another, you have the um, the steps where Game Maker is fetching these values from the array, uh, looking up the index in the array, and uh, accessing the value within it. The profiler will only tell you uh, how much time has been taken up by actual functions that have been called, rather than individual lines of code. So, uh, 2.667 milliseconds for the array length function being called 50,000 and one times isn't nothing. Uh, it does, however, pale in comparison to some of the other things. So this value is not going to change ever over the course of the loop. If you wanted to, it would be perfectly reasonable to try to reduce the number of times that this function is called. Uh, you could, for example, say uh, n equals array length, and then inside the loop itself, 
uh, i equals zero, i is less than n i plus plus, instead of, um, instead of saying i is less than the array length, because this value is going to be the same, and looking up the value stored inside a local variable is somewhat faster than looking up a value inside an array length function. Uh, function calls in GameMaker are generally fast. The array length function in GameMaker is particularly fast, but every time you do call a function, it will incur a, a small um, performance hit. So if you don't have to call a function 50,001 times per, uh, per draw event, you should try to try to not. So let me... Let me kill this off and let me restart the game in debug mode. And I will once again uh, run the profiler and we can we can get a bit of a measure of how well this is performing. Okay, I think that's enough. Uh, we can drag this back over. We can see if you're counting, the, uh, the average FPS is slightly higher than it was before. And when I say slightly, I mean it looks like it's about 33, 34 instead of 29, 30. Um, if we look back at the profiler for a more um, a more exact measure, we can see that the object draw event is now down to 43.146 milliseconds, so about 43 milliseconds. Uh, that is about, I want to say, about 12% faster than it was before. And the array length function is now only called one time instead of 50,001. And it's the total amount of time it takes is zero milliseconds. Again, array length itself is very fast, just don't call it incessantly. And draw a sprite takes up about as much time as it did before, uh, eleven point seven instead of eleven point I think four. That's just uh, that that's just random fluctuations. Uh, we didn't actually do anything to draw a sprite that should speed it up. So okay, you might say we've uh, we've sped up this for loop by about twelve percent. That's not nothing, and in a lot of situations it may be worth doing. However, and I guess I uh, I might as well close this again. Uh, there is, if I can put that down there. There is another type of loop in GameMaker, which you might have heard of, uh, and it is not the for loop. So instead of, and I'm going to comment out this entire block, um, instead of using a for loop, I'm going to use a repeat loop. And uh, the repeat loop is very much a simplified version of the for loop. The repeat loop will run just a specified number of times. It won't give you a starting condition and an ending condition and an update condition the way that a for loop will. It'll just whatever is inside this block will run this many times. Uh, the repeat loop is actually somewhat unique to GameMaker. I don't think I can think of off the top of my head any other programming languages that have something like it. Anyway, I guess I'll uh, comment out that as well because it's not needed. So we can we can try to use a repeat loop instead of the for loop. And repeat loops are faster than for loops in GameMaker. Uh, as I said before about for loops, we don't have a bunch of GML running to, uh, to dictate what's happening to dictate how many times the loop runs. Uh, this happens inside the engine in, uh, in native code, which is going to be somewhat faster than the slow GML. And additionally, this uh, the value that goes inside the repeat loop is evaluated exactly once. So uh, if you say repeat the array length of an array, uh, the array length is going to be calculated exactly once rather than 50,000 times. Uh, this does, however, give us some of our own challenges, such as the fact that we do not have a built-in loop counter. Uh, there are a lot of people, including myself, who would appreciate it if Yo-Yo Games added a, uh, a for each, a proper for each uh, loop to Game Maker, which would, in a nutshell, basically just be a repeat loop but with a loop counter. So we're going to have to define our own. So I can say var i equals zero before the loop counter. And this is also not going to update on its own. There is no i plus plus condition. If I ran the game now, the loop counter i would have the value of zero every single time the loop ran. So you would just be drawing duck at index zero 50,000 times, which isn't very useful. So at the end, we can uh, we can do it ourselves. We can say i plus plus. And let me run the game. And that was not debug mode. I wanted to run that into bug mode. Let me run that into bug mode. Okay, I can drag the profiler out. I can. Okay, good. It's going. I can start profiling, and I'm gonna get. I'm gonna let this go for a bit. Okay, that should be good. So again, if you look at the FPS counter on the debug overlay, you can see that it is, uh, once again, slightly higher than it was before. It's now high 30s rather than about 30 itself. And indeed, if you looked at the profiler for a more granular view, uh, you can see the total draw event is now down to 41.037 milliseconds. Uh, array length, once again, is called only once. And draw sprite, is, uh, draw sprite has been called about as many times, uh, taking up about as many uh, milliseconds as it did before. Okay, so 41 milliseconds versus 43, again, it's not nothing. It's about a 5% boost over what we had last time, and I want to say about an 18% boost 
over uh, what we had the first time when we were running just the regular for loop with the uh, with eyes less than array length. So it's not nothing. You can definitely use repeat loops in your game if you would prefer uh, over regular for loops. However, I'm going to make the argument that in a vast majority of real world cases, this is not something that you should actually worry about. So uh, by all means, do this. By all means, instead of instead of saying i is less than array length or i is less than ds list or whatever the case may be, um, by all means, uh, save the array length to n and say i is less than n or something like that. You can also say um, you can also actually put two statements in the initialization condition of a for loop, and you can actually say. Uh, let me comment out the second half. You can actually say for var i equals zero comma n is array length, and then say i is less than n i plus um, plus. That's legal. This entire thing is a single uh, a single expression, and you can see the game will run just as it did before. This is actually what I do. Um, however, if I were to open up, for example, Windows Calculator, and the difference between this and the repeat loop was about uh, two milliseconds in fifty thousand iterations. So if I were to take uh, if I were to take two and divide it by 50,000 and hit enter, you can see that on average, using the repeat loop over the for loop saves about 40 nanoseconds. Let that sink in. 40 nanoseconds. Again, it's not nothing, but if you only have a small loop that runs, for example, 10 or 15 or even 100 times, if you have a for loop which runs a hundred times, which is already something that you're probably not going to be doing in the step or in the draw event, uh, you're only going to be saving four microseconds. Four one thousandths of a millisecond. That's four microseconds. And yes, this means that your game is going to perform slightly better, but that's kind of like saying throwing an ice cube in the Pacific Ocean is going to make the temperature of the Pacific Ocean slightly colder. Technically, yes, but for most practical purposes, probably probably not going to notice. Okay, a couple notes. If you are doing something truly unusual, this can be useful. Um, if you're running a long loop in something like the game start event, when you're, for example, initializing a bunch of like item data or the player's inventory or something, and if you do have a truly long uh, loop running in something like the, uh, the game start event, and you want to reduce the game's load time a little bit, it may be worth using a repeat loop over a for loop, just... Uh, just to take a small amount of time off your average load time. If you're doing something like making something that isn't a game, uh, for example, if you're making something that looks like traditional computer software in Game Maker, and maybe when the user clicks a button, the, the, the program is going to do something very computationally expensive. In cases like that, it may be worth using a repeat loop over a regular for loop. But otherwise, in most real world situations, this is something that I would call a micro optimization. And if your game is running slowly, it's probably worth investigating other parts of your code first. Another thing that's worth mentioning, and I have a feeling that uh, Mr. Patrick Crafe in particular is going to be yelling at me to mention this. If I were to change this back to i is less than array length, get rid of the i is less than n. Uh, if I were to change this back to the original for loop, and if I were to run this inside the YoYo compiler, uh, you would see that there is going to be a slightly more noticeable difference um, between if I were to, to, to write this loop the classical way versus the repeat loop. And once the YoYo compiler version actually compiles, we're going to be seeing that the uh, the classic version is running at about 120 FPS. Unfortunately, I cannot use the debugger to um, to have a look at how the uh, the draw event is doing with the profiler because if you try to run a YoYo compiled game with the debugger, it'll just do the the regular Game Maker VM version. So we're going to have to um, all we can really do is look at the uh, the FPS real meter in the debug overlay. So that's about a 20, 120 FPS real. Uh, whereas, if I were to change this to i equals 0, n equals array length, i is less than n, i++, plus plus, if I were to change it to this, we would get about, I want to say, a 50% boost in speed um, in the YoYo compiler like this. And the reason for that is that the, um, the YoYo compiler will translate your GML to C++. All right, so it's gone up from about 120 to about 160. Uh, which is not quite 50%, but it's more like a 33, 35%, a 33-35% boost. Maybe a little bit more. It's hitting 170 occasionally. So that's definitely a decent increase. Uh, the reason for that, as I was saying, is that the area compiler will translate this into C++. Uh, the margin will be smaller. If you've heard me rant about the pros and cons of using FPS Real as an indication of performance in the past, you will know that if your game as a whole is running faster, 
then a small increase of, for example, uh, two milliseconds being shaved off the frame time is going to be more of a, um, have a more noticeable effect on the FPS reel. And if I were to, uh, if I were to comment out the for loop in its entirety and move over to the repeat loop, uh, we should once again be having a, um, a slightly more noticeable uh, increase in performance than the 5% or so than we were seeing in, um, uh, in the regular GameMaker VM version. And that's going to have to recompile. And we can see that we are hitting 170, 180, occasionally 190. I don't think we're really touching 200 FPS real uh, using the repeat loop in the OYO compiler. And that is an increase of about uh, 50% over the um, over the base version. And that is the kind of thing in which using a repeat loop may be worth considering um, if you're using something in the YoYo compiler. Again, this is 50,000 iterations. And if you're just using a, a more normal sized loop that is more similar to something that you're probably actually going to do in a game, you're probably not going to have any loops running in the step or draw events that are greater than maybe about 100 or so. The time savings probably still isn't going to be very dramatic. And even now, I would say that if your game is running slowly, I would recommend uh, going and investigating other parts of your game logic uh, before you go and change all your for loops to repeat loops. Anyway, I'm going to stop. If you want this code, uh, look in the video description. I am going to uh, simply call that commit message uh, for loops versus repeat loops. If you want to change all your for loops to repeat loops, go ahead. If you want to just change all your for loops to something more like this, where you don't get array length every time, um, feel free. Again, that's what I generally do. More so than anything else, I hope you've come away from this video with a slightly better understanding of how GameMaker works internally and the sorts of things that you should and shouldn't look out for when it comes to optimizing your game. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, look for the links in all the usual places. You can see your name in the credits, get these videos a day early, see a preview of my future plans, all that kinds of fun things. Otherwise, I try to post about two game dev videos a week, uh, one tutorial tutorial and one let's make a tower defense game. I'll probably eventually make more videos on general game maker optimization tricks like this, but I don't currently have any planned. I hope you all found that useful and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Connor, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Halo Factory, Posho, Sindra Larson, Tusk, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.